Hello everybody and welcome to another Rental Tracks how-to video. This time we are going to focus on step number three, which is where we're going to put in your company's basic settings information. And that is going to set the tone and that's going to set the dynamic fields for a lot of the information that the system can automate for you. Remember, one of the major features of Rental Tracks is it's going to automate a lot of the tedious tasks that you normally have to do in a day. In order to do that, we have to set the system up to automatically pull information and fill in forms, email templates, and stuff like that. So the next step is to put in our business settings. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to work on the settings tab. So we're going to go to the settings drop down, and then we're going to go down to where it says basic settings. Once you click on that, it's going to launch you into your basic settings uh, form field. So this is where we're going to put all the master data for our system. So you can work on the left hand side in the company information section, fill out your company name, along the top. Your VAT number is your tax number. So in Canada, it might be your GST number, um, your VAT number, whatever. You got to put it in here. And remember, all the forms that you're filling in here are going to be tied directly into what we call dynamic fields later on. So it's going to automatically pull this information to fill out for you. So enter your company information as much as you have here. Your company email, this is the core email for your system. So all of your communications are going to be tied directly into here. Yes, you're going to be, have the ability to send emails through your user accounts um, and, and to tag into that. However, your email address here, this is what the system is going to use to send it into the server. So make sure that this is a valid email address for your company. Put in your website and then you can upload your logo here. So in order to do that, you do have a file size limit for your logo. I think it has to be under 600 kilobytes. Make sure that your logo fits into that size. If it needs to be larger or smaller on your paperwork, you can manipulate that on your own using a different variety of graphics programs, but the file size has to be under 600 kilobytes. You can upload it here, as well as uploading a watermark as well. You can do that as well. When you upload a watermark, it's going to take that image and stretch it out over and behind all of the text on your forms. So make sure that it makes sense and isn't going to blur your and, and distort the information on your on your paperwork, on your customers' orders, invoices, and whatnot. It's got to make sense and look good. You can play around with that and work with that feature as well. Then you also have the ability to, down here in order settings, this is where we're going to get more involved with how we're placing orders. So the first setting is very important, disable stock control, and I'll talk about that for just a little bit. Rental Tracks is going to focus on limiting your ability to rent and sell items based on the stock that you have in your system. The default setting is to dis is to have stock control engaged. So if you have, say, 100 chairs or 50 generators, and you go to rent out more than those numbers, Rental Tracks is going to limit you to that amount available. If you want to be able to do things like subrent those items or always say yes to the client and find products from somebody else in order to meet their needs, you can disable that stock control by selecting yes. So if you want to be limited to your inventory, select no. If you want to be have an unlimited uh, ability to go out and meet your customer's needs, say yes. And then we can use things like the stock tab in order to uh, manage what items we need to get. And that'll be explained once again in a later how-to video. Then you're going to go through and set up your the rest of your information. This is completely based on how your company operates and your business model. So your standard number of days between the start and end of an order can be entered. Enter your standard start time and end time. So when does your business open and when does it close? And this will have an effect on your inventory because if a product is brought in at a return time, if you've set the return time of an order after your business hours is done, then that product will not be available for the start of business the next day because the system understands that the product isn't back yet to meet the next needs of your client. So make sure that you set your start and end times appropriately that the system understands that somebody has checked those items back in during business hours so that they become available going forward. Then you can set your standard payment method using the drop down bar. We haven't if you, you're just starting this and this is your first time going through step three, then you might not have all of the same payment methods that I have listed here because you're going to set those up for your company in a later tutorial. So make sure you go through and set those up. Then you're going to set your standard status at creation. This is just to help you speed through. So if normally your business model is you, you create a price calculation or you quote somebody first, then you can set your status at quote to save time. But if you uh, you know automatically create it as a booking, you can do that as well and set that up. And then once again, go through standard delivery method and collection method. What It depends on your business practice and how you operate. The uh, roster module 
That's another feature that I'll talk about for another second here. The roster module is basically your staffing module. So how you're going to staff your events and what you're going to do in order to uh, communicate and tag your, your employees on different events. So for the roster module, if you select yes to use the roster module, then what it's going to allow you to do is tag your employees and your staff on certain on the order so they're being sent notification of events that are taking place that they are to be part of and there's another way to set up and we'll show you that in a later module uh, how to video as well to set up the automatic communications for them as well so if you want to be able to communicate through the orders with your clients or with your users sorry then you're going to select yes to use the roster module. And the last one on the left hand column is a replacement product. So you're going to create later on a virtual product that allows you to explain to your client why you're charging a replacement price for the item. So if they send back a damaged item and you need to charge them to replace that item, it's going to pull the product manager in here to uh, charge them for that. And that'll be another how to video later on. If we go over and go up to the top of the second hand column, we're going to get into more setup features. So the first feature that we have on here is the iCal link. So with rental tracks, you are able to link directly to your iCal, iCal feed. So with that being said, your Google calendars or your iCal calendars, we can send the information from rental tracks into those calendars to populate to create a master calendar for your company. And you're going to use this link in order to do that. Then we can enter our banking details into the areas here. Now, the only I, I will caution you. The banking details I would provide to your clients if you're accepting stuff like wire transfers uh, and whatnot, it's not a mandatory field. So if you don't feel comfortable putting your banking details in, you don't have to do that. Then you can create an email signature line in here down at the bottom in order to communicate better with your clients. You can enter that information as well. And then you're going to select an area. You can put in uh, an email copy too so that you get a receipt basically for all of your communications will all be sent to this uh, standard email address in the email copy to area. Then down below, we've got our invoice settings. So this is where we're going to enter our standard time allowed for payments. So when you get to the invoicing stage, it will give you a payment due date. That's based on this number here. So if, it's th if you do a 30, 60 uh, system or if you just do a 10 day payment, eight day payment, um, you're going to enter that information in here. You can also set your invoice start number. So if you're using a separate accounting programs like QuickBooks Online, for instance, and you need the numbers to match up together, you can enter the starting invoice number if you've been doing business beforehand. You can also enter in your standard debtor account as well um, to be used at the export. So you can enter that information there. Then down at the bottom, we can enter our discount insurance rates. So this is going to set up and try and save us some time when we're doing stuff like applying discounts to the client or uh, charging an insurance price or delivery charge as a percentage. Uh, you're going to enter the percentages in here as a decimal place. And then you're going to enter in. It's automatically set up to have a local delivery uh, or freight and postage, uh, an insurance product and a d discount product into the system. But you're going to set up the percentages and then when you're in the order we'll show you how in a later how-to video to do the uh, show hide insurance discount calculator uh, and that's it for your basic settings always 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 go up and save your master data that way you don't lose any of the work constantly safe as a web-based program we want to make sure that you don't lose any of your data so save your work often and uh, to avoid losses and wasting your time that's it for the basic settings. Now your company is set up. Your logo will now appear once you've got that set up on your login page for your clients to be able to see. And you'll be all set, ready to get going, setting up the rest of your features. If you have any questions, give us a call at 888-925-6236. That's 888-925-6236. Send us an email at info at rentaltracks.com or visit the website www.rentaltracks.com.